It's uh, Rob and Rich. We're right outside the GameSpot uh, base station, you know, brought to us by our friends at Samsung. Love Samsung. We've, we've got it. We, we're, we're running into all kinds of crazy people out Trevor here. Trevor Roth is here. They Trevor just Roth. Me up off the street. I don't know these people, just to be clear. Exactly. Know, Trevor, just it's a hostage situation. Pretend that you do. Now, uh, so Trevor, does the name Roddenberry mean anything to you people? Basically, when this, yeah, it yeah. better. They're writing your checks. Probably not a lot of Roddenberry fans around here, huh? I'm telling you, this is like when this was nothing. This is a shack and four peoples. The Roddenberry people built this thing. I, I will say the first uh, convention that I am aware of that I know of is a uh, science fiction convention, Star Trek convention, 1972 in New York. And without that, who knows? Maybe Comic Con wouldn't be. The streets would be filled with people walking around not dressed up. There you go. Never so, know. Let me ask you this: How long have you been with Roddenberry? Um, God, way too long. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, no, eight years now. Eight, eight years. Eight years. Yeah. And you guys are venturing into a whole lot of stuff that isn't just the Star Trek universe. You got you got graphic novels coming out. Yeah, we've got a uh, graphic novel we're introducing here that's a Comic-Con exclusive. You can get the first co uh, chapter of our new graphic novel, Worth. And uh, the uh, whole graphic novel is coming out on September 5th. Our third volume of our Days Missing graphic novel is coming out later this year. We're really trying to take what Gene did with Star Trek and say, look, it's great science fiction, it's amazing, it's a fantastic legacy to continue. Let's make sure people are getting that same kind of science fiction from other uh, other properties as well and keep pushing out through med new media vehicles. So That's awesome. And yeah. tell us, now there's also, isn't there a documentary that you guys are about, that you put out or you're about to put out? Yeah, uh, Trek Nation, the special edition double disc DVD of Trek Nation, which is a documentary uh, that's based in sort of discovering Gene and discovering Star Trek and the influences. Done and, by his son, correct? Yeah, so his, his, my business partner, Rod Roddenberry, Gene's son, is sort of the vehicle through which you kind of learn all this stuff. And it's a very personal journey. And the double disc has all this extra bonus footage because we couldn't fit everything into like an hour and a half. So like extended interviews from like Stan Lee and George Lucas and Seth MacFarlane and all these amazing people, J.J. Abrams, as well as like home videos that you wouldn't be able to see anywhere else from the Roddenberry estate. And uh, and we made this awesome featurette specifically about fans. If you're a Star Trek fan, this was literally made with you in mind. I hope you get the DVD and watch the stuff. We spent a lot of time. We so appreciate you, and we wouldn't be here without you. So that's for you. No, maybe, awesome. now maybe I'm off base here, but I feel like that documentary also would have an audience outside of Star Trek fans because it's really about it's more than just about hey Star Trek is this and this is behind the scenes it's yeah. also about the journey that Gene took and how Rod was a part of that father-son story it, it is my opinion that and I'm jaded but it's and biased but it's my opinion that look if you are a fan of science fiction you'll be interested in this because really in many ways Gene was uh, one of the fathers of modern day science fiction if you are a fan of Star Trek you will love this if you're just a fan of like biographies and understanding the idea of like a son searching for his father right. and trying to understand you know who that is I mean my dad's still alive and I wouldn't even say I know him as well as Rod knows his father now having gone through this journey wow. it's amazing to really understand who your parents are and in this case his parent was a legendary producer of science fiction created one of the best science fiction phenomenons ever ever created. So. You, you gotta wonder because because Roddenberry basically, Gene Roddenberry basically started the phenomenon that we're standing in front of, essentially. I mean, the, the sort of sci-fi, the, 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 the convincing element of sci-fi and the, the, the sort of fanaticism that goes with that series was sort of the, the beginning of this process. I wonder what he would think and feel about what has happened now because it's no longer offbeat to be popular to be watching sci-fi it's now very mainstream big bu budget movies big series how would he feel about that I think first of all Gene would love the fact that geek is chic now I think he would so enjoy the idea of the geeks and the disenfranchised now being you know cool to be and, and furthermore I would say you know and Gene said this when Star Trek got so big you know he used to go up and people would say like you know did you expect it to get this big right. was this always what you figured and his, you know his comeback was just as I planned it. <laughs> so, you planned it That's confidence. Rich, Rich says that a lot. I do that a lot. When I, whenever I screw up, I always say, just, just as, as I planned. planned it. You know, it's great that in the movie you got a lot of uh, young up-and-comers like J.J. Abrams. Kids just starting out in the business. Yes. Yeah. Were <laughs> you know? those guys? Yeah. I've heard of them a little bit. Still waiting for his career to blow up. Yeah, well, you know, someday he might become something, you know? Yeah. Like, whatever happened to that Han Solo guy, yeah? That yeah. guy, yeah, something. Exactly. Now, there's another thing, there's another thing that I, I, I've heard tell about that is not Star Trek centric, but you guys are doing White Room 360. So, yeah, okay, this sounds interesting, what is it? There's a film out there, or soon to be out there, called White Room O2B3. 
or 02B3. Go to whiteroom02b3.com to check it out. Essentially, it is the first 360 degree science fiction narrative film ever to be created. It is uh, utilizing a really interesting and cool technology where we have this system of cameras, nine different cameras, and you put them in the center of a room. And we literally create a movie all the way around the cameras, such that the cameras are looking at 360 degrees of the room simultaneously. That allows for you to literally look at every single thing that's happening in the film at any given time. You get to literally play the director to some extent and watch whatever part of the film is going on. It also makes it really hard to produce because everyone has to be on, no one can make mistakes, directors can't be in rooms, you can't see cameras that's on the amazing. set. Everything's captured, so you're not missing anything. So let's say you, you've hired a young Rob Benedict, and uh, say, obviously he would have to, he's not memorizing lines, he's got he's got stuff to do at night, he needs to be taking little sneaky peeks at the script. Where can he hide it on the set? There's no hiding on the Robbie? set. Robbie? No hiding, my friend. So Rich can't do the thing when you come around and he's off camera phoning it in? There's no, there's no phoning in. No phoning we, in. Don't, we don't phone in at Roddenberry. Don't phone it in at Roddenberry, Rich. Wow. Well, you know, know what? That's what? You should have that on your license plates. We don't phone it in at Roddenberry. There you go. That's our tagline. You yeah. knew, how'd you know that? Well, no. Great, great, great Tell minds. Me where we can watch that? So it's not out yet. It should be coming out later this year. Look towards New York Comic Con. Um, but if you go to White Room 02B3, you can find out all about it. Can and you watch a clip of it? or There's, there's a preview that we're okay. putting on it. But here's the thing. To watch it in 360 degrees, you got to have certain uh, capabilities. So, what, there are you don't know this, but there are over 700 dome theaters in the United States and over 1,500 dome theaters worldwide. We are currently working on getting White Room into those dome theaters, so you can literally see the film all the way around you. In addition to that, if you're not near a dome theater, don't worry. We're creating an application that will allow you to, if you're watching like a movie on an app, turn around the room. I'm going to get around. Watch. I'm back and see the film anytime you want, any place you want. That's awesome. That's, That's awesome. So there's so much stuff going on. They can check that uh, film out on that site. As far as the graphic novels, either here at Comic Con, otherwise, can they get those online? Are they be in bookstores? Get them online, Roddenberry.com. We have a store as well. Check out there. And other than that, uh, look for us at your local places. We'll find. We'll be there. Trevor Roth, Manning. The freight train that is Roddenberry. Keeping it alive, keeping it real. Going Moment of peace. Moment of silence. <laughs> All right, we're back. We're back. <laughs>